The saga of truck tolling in this state seems to, well, go on and on. Now we got a new twist and some new analysis. Welcome to my state of mind. I am Dan York. It is a pleasure to have you join us on this Friday evening. And uh, I like the Friday shows because we get a chance to kind of spread out on an issue or, or two. And tonight we're going to kind of dig into the Ramondo Roadworks truck toll program. We've got a new twist and a state representative who has kind of shaken up the conversation a little bit this week. And an economist from Brown who I think leans toward thinking eh, it might be okay. And uh, he and I will end up uh, on the floor killing each other by the time this whole thing is. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I like to shake up the academic types who come here. Brown sends us a lot of smart people, and I just read a piece from our, 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 our economics professor. It is the smartest thing I've ever read, and I don't even understand it. That's how good he is, so I'm in trouble tonight. Uh, let's, uh, let's just put up a, a headline or two. Well, here's a press release that actually caused... I don't expect you to be able to read that unless you got one of those 72-inch screens, but uh, this is Representative Filippi who who kind of shook up everybody uh, this week with a conversation about a constitutional change that caused this headline, lawmaker to seek ban on car tolls. And with no further ado, we introduce the man who takes care of farms by day, attorney by afternoon, <laughs> and state representative <laughs> by night, right? Long time no see, Blake. How are you? I'm well. Happy to be back, Dan. Happy to have you here. Uh, you and I had a good conversation on the radio about your idea, and then I thought more about it and dwelled on it, and now I'm thinking, I'm not so sure. But you have a, a moment or two or ten here to actually explain what you want to do. You want to put a constitutional question up that does what? The constitutional question would ask the voters to amend our constitution to state that any new tolls on passenger vehicles cannot be asserted. Period. Period. Now, at first glance, because I have opined that one of the reasons we should oppose this roadworks program is that if the nuts not cracked with the trucks, guess who they're going to come to uh, with 40 to 50 million dollars worth of infrastructure up, meaning gantries, meaning toll electronics? Well, us. Us. And maybe my opining and others who have been, uh, expressed that neuroses, worry, uh, has begun to resonate. Is that what's motivated you to put this question up? I love what you say, but you don't dictate the policies I come up with. This was the result of my own analysis of, of the Roadworks plan and the, uh, the Remy study. And you know, I, I believe that... Oh, wait a second. Before you, get, before, you make, you know, before you turn into a wise guy on me, what I'm asking you, and what you said on the radio to me the other day, was that the pulse of the people has been worried about them getting told by uh, via car. Yes, but you, you just asked was it was it your was it your commentary Jeez, that made me do gee this? Whiz, and I, and I, <laughs> I'm not looking for authorship on your beautiful constitutional amendment, but since you want to pick a fight, go ahead and pick it. Okay, no. So I, my fear has has always been that the the proposed truck tolling won't be enough to pay for the bond that we're going to take out okay. to do the bridge repairs. And as you know, we came up with an alternative pay-as-you-go approach, which I support 100%. Which I want to talk more about with our economist after, after he joins us and have you guys share thoughts. Okay. So if, if we're not going to go down that road, I think we need to have a conversation about truck toll, uh, car tolling. Because our current leaders ha have assured us this will never be used for car tolls. And, and I believe them. But my concern is a future governor or a future Speaker of the House or future Senate President 10, 15 years from now may see those cars going under the gantries and it may be an irresistible source of revenue to pay off bonds that truck tolls are not covering. All right, well, I, I, you know, I think your instinct's on the mark. I'm not looking for pride of authorship on your thinking process, but let me accelerate it. I don't think it's going to be that long. And I, I don't believe this governor... Uh, when she says this is not going to, to affect cars because I don't, I don't think she's lying to us. I think she just has high hopes. If there's a gap in funding, and we'll talk more about that as we go, they've got to do something because they're going to have a half a billion dollar principal nut and $1.1 million payment plan that they're going to have to finance some way. Here's what I don't get about, about your thought process. Introducing this amendment or this constitutional change almost gives permission 
for the roadworks program to go on ahead as planned. I it doesn't really so. do anything to disrupt it. You, you have, and I appreciate what you've done, standing with the Republicans on this pay-as-you-go idea, which I think has to have more respect in the community and more people listening to it. But as soon as you abdicate, I think your constitutional question abdicates your good work on pay-as-you-go. As you go. It, it gives everybody an out to not even look at that thing by just saying, yeah, let's just protect the cars. Follow me? I follow you. I don't necessarily agree, but I follow you. I, I think... I think with any issue, there has to be a robust debate on all aspects and on all the potential outcomes. And I'm putting this out there because I think it needs to be addressed in this ongoing debate that the public's having, that the media's having, and that the legislature is eventually going to have next session. Well, your instincts, though, on pay as you go, I think, ought to be at least explored more. And here's the thing. If it's not tolling cars down the line, as one radio listener said to me the other day, following your conversation with me on the air on WPRO, weekdays noon to three, uh, he said, well, you know, okay, if it's not car tolls, it'll be mileage tax. It'll be some other hit to the consumer driving public to make up the gap that you and I both agree might likely occur in this roadworks program. Or, or, or it may be a re reallocation of existing taxes at that time. Right. Instead of additional taxes, it may be, let's use the money we already have. Right. What's your druther? To fight this plan with a pay-as-you-go idea? Or just put the constitutional amendment up and protect the cars? I, I don't think it's an either-or question. I think the constitutional effort minimizes your first, your first good effort to argue the case. No, I, I think the first step is, are we going to go pay-as-you-go or not? I think that's the first question we have. Yeah, but once you put this question out and you have, now you've got people thinking, eh, he's easy. We can get him. We'll just put a, we'll just give him a constitutional. No, let, let me we'll be clear him. that I fully back pay as you go. And if they go down the road of roads, road works, I'm not going to support it. But I believe that if we go down that road, this protection for passenger tolling needs to be part of the conversation. All right. You guys figure out whether or not you think that's a good strategy. When we come back, Blake will stick around as we enjoy the conversation from a Brown professor who has his own thoughts on this. Stay with us. Years, and we have the worst bridges in America. One of the things I like about the, the tolling, as we've proposed it, the majority of the burden falls on out-of-state truckers. So right now, every time an 18-wheeler from another state comes through Rhode Island, they're getting a free ride. They use our roads, they abuse our roads, and they pay nothing. We're the, one of the only states. Well, there's uh, the most recent and semi-consistent conversation coming from the governor on Newsmakers about a month ago when she was doubling down on the need for the roadworks program. Now, there's been plenty of analysis. You just heard from State Representative Blake Filippi on, on what he thinks about that. There's his head crossing over. I should have told you to stay right there, but I just want to <laughs> show a headline. Uh, which caused us to say, hey, here's, here's a guy that we ought to talk to. The journal uh, checked in with three economists, one of which is Brown Professor Neil Marotra. Did I get that right? You did? Well yes. Done. There's a couple of R's in there which are hard for me, uh, silly wabbit. Uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate thanks it. For having uh, me. You're an economics professor. You've been at Brown for a couple of years. You come from Columbia. In a, with the, one, of your, one of your degrees is Columbia, right? So yeah, PhD from Columbia. Good for you. Congratulations on that. And a Minnesotan. Yep. Uh, do you have the high vowel? You got the high O going there? I don't, I don't, I don't think I still have the uh, accent, but I still have the. Uh, the sports affiliation. Are oh, you a Vikings uh, fan? Well, well, so far, six and two, <laughs> not so bad. Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, I was a little disturbed that the journal, and, and most people who are giving this Roadworks uh, program and analysis, start with uh, revenue source needs as, as, as like the foundational given that we need new revenue sources. You've heard the state representative in the last segment talk about his belief that the pay-as-you-go idea is the best way to do this. And simply, folks, understand one thing. So in case you've missed it, the truck toll program by the governor is proposed for a separate uh, uh, bureaucracy here to uh, establish a dedicated revenue stream via tolls that stays outside the general fund budget. So an authority will be in control of this money. She doesn't want to have to go back to guys like Blake and argue for money every year to fix bridges. That's part of her motivation for doing this. You disagree with him, and you guys talk amongst yourselves about whether or not we have enough money to scoop in the budget, reprioritize, and provide 60 or 70 or $80 million a year for bridge work. 
Well, what I will say conceptually is that a, um, in, a, in a state that's depressed like Rhode Island, in a state where unemployment has obviously come down, but there's uh, still a lot of slack in the, in the, in the labor market, you want, to, uh, you want to redirect economic activity towards the president, uh, towards the present. And, the one, and one way to do that is by issuing debt. And obviously, states can't generally do that because they have balanced budget uh, rules. The federal government does that in recessions. That's something that this, one of the reasons that the Remy study was finding large employment effects is because you're putting people to work today and then paying off over time. It's stimulus. And it is. It is stimulus. It's a way of getting, uh, a way of getting stimulus. And so now, conceptually, if, if, the, if there's enough revenue already at the, at RI dot and and uh, we we're, we're just misspending the money right now, which which might be the case, then uh, then then it then it might make sense to to just reprioritize that money. But still, conceptually, you you would want to issue more debt in a in a, in a recession, and so I think that that's um, that's one reason that the that the the governor's plan is 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 scored as as uh, as increasing employment and, and having a large positive effect. The other thing is that a lot uh, by by tolling, she is correct that you're you're effectively um, charging for a service that we provide for uh, out of state truckers, and that is uh, and that's another reason why you're uh, why they're getting the no state the in the country numbers. has a unique or, or exclusive toll truck. Truck, truck toll. Sure. So that, so that might be problematic. Sure. And, I, and they haven't shown that they've done their diligence. Do you want a piece of this? You I, jump I, in. I'd, as like, as to, as you I'd want like to respond. Yeah. The, the idea that debt is good, I, I fundamentally disagree with. Debt actually got us into a big problem with our budget deficits o over the past 30 years. It was only a few years ago that we made the smart choice to start stop using debt for our maintenance. And it actually helped to alleviate some of our budget deficits. DOT was a debt financed operation for a long time. And we responsibly did, moved did away. Did it from have that. a revenue source that was attached to it, or was it just general obligation? Bonds? It, it, it was not, it did not have a revenue source that was attached to it. So, my, my problem is that this revenue source, I have concerns, won't make the nut. And, and then we can get into that. The, the, ne the next comment I have is, is your comment that the, the Remy study and the large employment effect. Mm -hmm. Under the Remy, Remy study, if 50 people work on 100 different bridges, it counted that as 5,000 jobs. So these numbers of employment that the Remy study advocates for, frankly, I think are, are fictitious and, and misleading. You know, the testimony that came out in front of the Finance Committee was exactly what I just said. It's numbers of people times jobs. So you could have the same 50-person yeah. crew go from job to job to job. And I should just point out that the Remy study is the study that we as taxpayers paid to, to that the governor commissioned when the House Speaker said, hey, why don't you do an economic study on this idea that you already put out four months ago? And, and uh, thank, that, thank that, God. That's not my impression for, for how they counted jobs. And maybe that, be that as it may, the, the study had sort of a headline number of $500 million in sort of extra activity. And that headline number sort of uh, is is ballpark it, it ballpark makes sense given that you're one redirecting activity from the future to today and because you are you are uh, raising a significant amount of revenue from out of state sources now if if we're you know all I can go off is the the, the ride out sort of uh, numbers in terms of uh, number of trucks that pass through and and I gather that the the administration has done some extra work on on figuring out whether whether those numbers are, are accurate. But we know that a lot of trucks, a lot of people are just passing through Rhode Island and using Interstate 95. And you know, I 90 is already told. Who, where are you going to go if you if you need to get to Boston if you need to get to the Cape? I'll answer that first. You, you mentioned the speaker. Thank God he put the brakes on this back back in the spring. Yeah, needs to be maybe a, not for the right reasons. But. Well, he needs to be applauded for it because this came out in the at the end of the session. Right. The Senate passed it immediately, and then what happened in the summertime? We learned that the DOT was in disarray. So they wanted to give approximately six hundred million dollars to an agency that turned out a couple months later to be in disarray. 
So th that's problematic in and of itself. And they wanted to give that money before an economic impact yeah, analysis well, was done. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the House Speaker is, is shifting. We have a, Jess, can you throw me a little piece of audio from the radio show uh, not too long ago where he commented on this? I'm certainly looking at the plan as favorable. Now, I've okay. always said, you know, I applaud the governor for coming up with a bold plan that's designed to finally take a, a, an appropriate look at our infrastructure and make the, the changes that we need. He, he was bargaining ballparks for truck tolls and all sorts of things. Now that the ballpark is off and the bargaining chips seem to be a little bit less in play here, he's leaning toward a truck toll program of some kind. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I agree. I'm glad he, he slowed this sucker down so that we all had time to debate it. But the momentum in your house right now is to do it. I mean, the legislative process hashes a lot of things out. So I, we don't know what's going to happen. I know that I'm thankful it didn't happen. I am too. And, and so I want to respond to the, the notion that this money is going to come from out of state. Because if you're New York, you can put whatever the heck tolls you want because it's impossible to go around if you want to go from Pennsylvania to Massachusetts or anywhere in New England. But if you take... I. I-395 through Connecticut, it adds about 15 minutes to your trip, and it's a $9 toll to make it into Boston. We're talking about a $30 toll to go through Rhode Island, estimated. And so I mean, that's only a $21 delta, but here's the problem. Do you trust Massachusetts? I don't. Look at what they're doing with casinos all around our state. They're trying to take our revenue sources. And if you lose the trucks coming through Rhode Island, we're going to lose all of the diesel I mean, tax pre revenue. Presumably, they, get. they still we'll have get, to go to the We'll, we'll get the <laughs> professor's uh, response to that question because i got to pause. You have posed the issue. The professor will respond when we come back to the office. With our Brown economics professor and our state representative on this truck toll situation, uh, Blake, you, you, you charged Neil with the uh, task of responding to this notion that trucks would bypass Rhode Island, thus uh, okay, countering I'm, I'm, your theory that this yeah. Rhode Island roadworks toll program might be good. Sure. I'm not, I'm not a trucker, but... Uh, Did you stay at Holiday and Express last <laughs> <Yeah>. night? <laughs> no, I didn't stay in a Holiday <laughs> Express either. But the fastest way to get, get to the Cape, I'm guessing, a uh, lot of traffic is going to the Cape. Uh, not all traffic is going to, to, to Boston. It will still have to go through, uh, through Rhode Island. $30 is a very small marginal cost given everything else that they have to pay for in terms of fuel and, uh, and, all, and, and, the, and the wage of the driver. So the notion that, that this toll is going to suddenly cause them to do um, pretty crazy things to, to try to avoid the state of Rhode Island like the plague, I, I mean, I, I don't think it's, it doesn't quite pass the smell test for me. I, you know, we, when we replaced the, uh, the Pawtucket River Bridge, there were truckers who were willing to pay $3,000 just to, just to get across the bridge, even well, though it was closed. They, 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 I mean, they, they, they passed the, it on, right? The, they, and, and, that's and, and the, governor, the same thing, right? This, the governor's story that they were willing to pay that fee and were lining up at the state police cruiser to pay the fee, uh, that, that was her spin, and that, that, that's been proven to be uh, completely without any kind of merit. It was just the dummies that got caught. And believe me, their bosses weren't happy if they weren't independent truckers. But here's what I want to know. Um, if I'm going to fall into the trap of worrying about new revenues that are necessary, sure. you're not supporting that notion, and I'm not supporting that notion. But if we are, gas taxes, diesel tax increases, as the Truckers Association has proposed, they're willing to go another $500 on their registration fees, and they're looking for a little bit higher diesel tax. That versus the truck toll, you That's say fine. what? That's fine, it's, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall on... It's going to fall disproportionately heavier on on uh, on Rhode Island residents and those so, who drive diesel. They're talking about sure. diesel tax. Sure. So the the Volkswagen and Mercedes sure. drivers perhaps are are, are and, and are I mean they, 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 these these revenue sources were considered in the in the Remy plan as well, and they they also have net economic benefits because. Again, a, a large part of the benefit is coming from you're doing construction now in a in a in a depressed economy. What, 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 about, what about the notion that you've got a 30-year nut for a 10-year project? In other words, it's a it's a half yeah. Million. But the infrastructure benefits are being realized over that same 30-year period. I mean, you they buy are, a, you buy a house, you go you, too. You, 
you buy a house and you and you pay off the the mortgage and you enjoy the the the, the rents from living in a house for for thirty years, well, right? You have six hundred I mean, million dollars in payments to Wall Street banks under the Remy analysis and the RoboWorks plan. That's not. The, I don't think that's the right way to think about it. I mean, you don't you, you don't think about your mortgage that way either. I mean, I over sure the o over the course of a thirty year mortgage, you're going to pay twice the value of, of what you got in the beginning, right? You, you get $200,000 today and you're gonna pay, make $400,000 of payment. That, that's not how you think about the interest cost. You have to discount that interest cost over time. No, but 30, if you got cash to buy the house. Payments in 30 years are not, pay, right? Well, payments if you got cash to buy the house, it's probably preferable to buy the house with cash. Not necessarily. It depends what your alter. It, de it depends what the, what the interest rate you could earn on that. It depends on, on, that. It depends on the overall revenue picture and all the other things you got to do with your money, it depends on the discount rate to be to be technical about it. And the question is is if you could take that, you could pay for your house in cash, or you could put you could invest that in uh, in in a set of assets of similar riskiness, and you would you would get yeah. some I, some I return. I think this is probably where the so. mortgage uh, comparison fails because you're probably making all sorts of sense about how to buy a house. And no, no, no. It may I, not mean, necessarily I mean, this is just, this is just a net. This, this is just a project. net present value calculation, and and I think that that, you know, in any any corporation, any financial investment, they're going to do a net present value calculation. They're not just going to sum up the. Uh, the, the payments that you make over 30 years and call, and say that that's an apple well, and oranges comparison. You know what, as you're, as you're building out over 10 years, you're starting to chase your tail with maintenance and needs, uh, uh, infrastructure needs continually. So you've got a 10 year project that's got a 30 year nut to it. What do you do in year 11 when all this other stuff is still necessary infrastructure wise? How many times do you go to the well for a 30 year note on a 10 year effort is, is my question. And, but and all those jobs after year 10, all those government jobs, those shovel ready, ready jobs are gone. So that, in but year, they were there for they were there for 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 however and many years, and we're better off that those people were were employed and were 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 doing things instead of instead of uh, waiting for the housing market to to rebound in Rhode Island or or just leaving the state. And yeah. then they're no longer employed in that in that industry, and in year eleven through thirty, we are responsible for this nut. All right, give me uh, thirty seconds on why you think this roadworks program is not good. Because I don't think we're going to make the money to pay the bonds. That was 10 seconds. Very efficient. Summary? I think the Roadworks program is a sound program. I think it's, it's, it's having a positive economic impact because it's redirecting activity uh, from the future to, to, to today uh, when, we're in a, when we're in a depressed economy coming out of a very severe recession. And it's raising revenue off people who don't live in Rhode Island, and and so even if there's some diversion associated with that, that's that's beneficial. We're we're charging for a service we provide. And, you, and, 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 and any it's reaction to his worry and mine and others that if the if the if the nuts not cracked, they come they come looking either for higher fees, which they've my, already my talked about, or is that a, or it, vehicles. My understanding is that the the revenue Cars. bond is just is. is you get whatever revenue comes out of the toll on trucks. So the people who are bearing that risk are the are the bond owners, not the state of Rhode Island. That's my understanding of how this works. That 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 it w it, it wouldn't have to be uh, uh, backed up by any additional revenues. But even if it were, I think it's I think it's unlikely that it would be uh, that it would be extended to our cars. Out of the sixty million dollars in toll revenue, only thirty comes from out of state. Thanks for both of you. Conversations ongoing. Last word next. This Roadworks truck toll program is a very, very, very important conversation. So please feed back to us uh, at any one of those places 228 1886, email, Facebook, tweet, all of that. Uh, more on it Monday night, actually, with a state senator who voted for it and now doesn't like it. Have a good weekend. Bye.